Hello, everybody. It's Kevin Broughton coming at you from Success Unlimited. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope many of you have seen our wonderful series called Women of Success. And today we have yet another episode with another dynamic, awesome woman who has been with Success Mortgage Partners for quite a while now. And uh, without any further ado, I'd like to introduce my friend, Amy Hinkle. Amy, how are you today? I'm doing great, Kevin. Thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited to be here and I'm flattered. Well, thanks so much for joining. Um, Amy is our corporate trainer here at Success Mortgage Partners. And Amy, you've been with us, gosh, it's now years and it's going on, what, five years maybe? Is that about right? Yes, um, five and a half years about at this awesome. point. So yeah, it's, it's been great. Well, and your role here is extremely important. And over the years, especially in you know the last six months, even you've helped so many people um, with the training on a variety of different ways. But one of the things, if you don't know Amy, she has the best energy of almost anyone I've ever met in my life. Every time you're around her, you feel better. She makes everyone's day better. She sees the glass half full every day. And she's just been a breath of fresh air to our company and to most importantly, our culture, because um, she always helps the other person first. She never worries about herself. That's always secondary. And she truly lives by the culture that we've spent 20 years designing. So I, I just wanted to thank you first and foremost, because that doesn't go unnoticed, Amy, and it is really, really valuable. Well, thank you. When you look at the world of training, what do you spend most of your time doing and who do you spend most of your time training? Well, uh, I actually work with nearly everyone in operations here at Success Mortgage Partners, but I focus primarily on the loan officers and the loan partners and the processors. Um, I, I have found that I, I like to show them and demonstrate items for them so they can do their job better and know that they have someone here that will support them and show them how to do things. But I also want them to have a good time, maintain a sense of humor about things, yes. and be able to apply what they've learned. So I try to incorporate all of those things in every training session that I work with, no matter who it is. So on the loan officer side, and I think you said loan officer, loan partner, and processors predominantly, right? Yes, on the loan officer side, is more of the training on focused on products, programs, and things of that nature, or is it on selling, or what? What's the majority of it focus on? It's actually it's actually the system that I okay. work with the most, making sure that they know how to correctly input the information into the system so they can move the file onto the next person in line. Although I do help people understand products and programs as well, primarily the system but we loop in products and programs to incorporate those two things together. And you have a great background in both, right? You, you, you yes. know the products and programs as well. And uh, yes. how has technology changed over the time since you got here versus now? Is it vastly different or, or how's that impacted the loan officer in your job? Oh, and we have definitely improved. When I first came on board, we were using Mortgage Builder, and yes. then we navigated over to Encompass, which was a huge improvement. Yes. Uh, I, I love using Encompass, so uh, you know I, I'm, I'm happy to talk about that every day. And it's certainly with the other uh, the bots that the IT team has produced for us, I love being able to share that good news with everyone. So we are definitely in a much better position from a systems standpoint than where we have been when I started. So you use the term bots and that's not familiar to everyone. Could you just right. take a moment and explain what a bot does and how it saves time? Yes, our IT team is very, very talented and they have created code in a lot of uh, the details in Encompass to replicate some of the uh, standard tasks that people will do so they can focus on other aspects of their job. For example, um, ordering the flood search. That was a repetitive task that a processor would do in the past, but now the IT team has written a program so it will automate that task and the processor can focus on other things in the file, knowing that this information is still being completed, but it's automated. Great, great. Um, how has COVID impacted, you know, it's been since March of 2020 when everyone quote unquote went home. Um, 
Has that impacted the training reality for you and, and amongst the employees or or is that not had much of a role in anything? It's been a huge impact. Uh, we've gone to, you know, doing everything virtually, which I don't mind doing because um, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm versed in that type of training. Although I do like the face to face. I like being in the office. I like to going in the basement in the Plymouth office and working with people there. So um, to, to borrow the, some of the terms from Owen, we've had to pivot a little bit to accommodate yeah. everyone's learning styles. We still want to make sure we, I can educate them and, and support them. So we've just had to pivot a bit right. and I'm hoping that everybody is still able to adjust accordingly. Great. I, I think they are. And um, hopefully, you know, we'll be back to a more normalized world at some point soon. And, and hopefully we can return to many of us have come back. And I, I've i been in the office since May of 2020. Now, there were times I was here alone, but uh, there's a <laughs> large number of people who have come back. So that is starting to become more normalized. Um, and when you look at the importance of training. I spend a lot of hours a week on the phone with loan originators that work at other companies. And the number one complaint I hear is lack of training opportunities at their company. Um, how do you make sure that the word gets out and to drive attendance and to bring value? What are some of the things you've done to try to enhance the number of people that access your training? I try to rely on consistency as well, where they know that there is going to be something offered to me every week. And the consistency extends to our S Success Mortgage Partners intranet as well, where they can find a library of all of the courses that I have done or provided a job aid for them. So I want them to know that they, they either can expect an email for a new training topic that week or if they're looking to learn something that I have done in the past, they can go to the SMP intranet and search for the information and it will always be there for them. And then as a, as a follow-up to that, I'm always making myself available to people as well. I'm never opposed to meeting with them on an individual basis to um, educate them and point out, you know, the, um, the things that they need to do in the system or help them to find the information um, if it's on our intranet. Well, I was pleasantly surprised. I went to our intranet recently and I, I couldn't believe the plethora of information that was available there from a training standpoint. And I actually perused through the whole thing to see, you know, what kind of topics. And, and I was like, wow, this is even more extensive than I, I realized. So I, I appreciate the time that you've taken to build all of those courses, to deliver them all, and more importantly, be available if people, because, you know, we're, we're going right now, we're navigating maybe the most difficult market that we've seen in 30 years. And yes. it's very difficult on salespeople right now because, you know, we just came off two of the best years and probably the two best years in the history of the mortgage industry immediately into a market where interest rates have doubled in less than 90 to 110 days. And we've never seen that happen before. And so, it makes it more difficult. And so any training opportunities they can have to get better certainly helps them because every deal matters as it always has, but especially in a tough market. Um, so anything that you see that LOs at SMP are not tapping into as much as you'd like them that you think might help them have a better transaction or to get another transaction? I think it's always important to revisit the credit risk section of our intranet so they are familiar with the tools of qualified mortgage products, conforming loan products, and the non-qualified um, mortgage products like that we broker out and those relationships that we have. As long as they're aware and can kind of keep those items in the back of their head, when they get those unique borrower situations that come up, that might trigger something that says, you know what? Okay, you're a self-employed borrower. There's a little bit of a, uh, you know, there's some complicated tax returns. I know that we've got some broker relationships where I'm going to explore that for you to see if that's something you would be eligible for. I, I know they don't see those every day, but it's right. good to just re refresh your memory with the tools that we have for the more complicated transactions. So that's all in credit risk. Yeah, and I think that, you know, we actually have more offerings than some folks that work here know. And I think that that's a good thing to keep 
harping on because in an environment where I talked to one of our top guys, he's a, a very high producing guy that works here. And he said, I'm expanding my base. I didn't used to like to do this kind of loan or that kind of loan. Now I'll do whatever it takes because I need to. And so I think to, you know, constantly be checking that credit risk section and make sure you're familiar with a hundred percent of what we have to offer. All it can do is help you. Um, what do you see, you know, you've been here five and a half years and how important for you has the culture been at this company? Like, is that a driving force in your career? Does that yes. be a big deal? Do you talk a little bit about the importance of that in your job and in your career? Yes, I have worked at companies that were global and I felt like I was a number there. And I clocked in, did my work, nobody cared, uh, at least it felt that way. And I clocked out and that was the end of the day. And it was, um, it was af- affecting my health because I wasn't happy there. And I made a decision that that was not the place that I was going to thrive in. And so I actively searched for new employment that would accommodate what I was needing for my for my brain, for my health, for my, um, for my career. And I kept searching and I found smaller companies before I came to SMP that were um, a little bit of a better fit for that culture. But I'll tell you, Kevin, when I was working at my last job before coming to SMP, we were contracted to help success mortgage partners. And I will never forget when I met Allison. And she made such an impact on me as to her professionalism and um, and just her organization skills. And uh, she set herself apart from any other contractor company that we were working with. I never forgot that. And then when the opportunity arose for me to look for new employment, the first place I went was Success Mortgage Partners because I could tell that the way that Allison dealt with us was an example of how she dealt with everybody at the company. And so that that was very meaningful for me. And I never forgot about it. And look where I am. Well, that was a great day for our company. And I'm so glad <laughs> your interaction with her went as good as it did when we were a vendor, because that led us to working together. And so yes. it's that kind of stuff that matters. And you've brought... Um, not only professionalism and product knowledge and and rock solid information to our company, but way more than that. You've brought a spirit and a kindness and a caring mindset. And and it shows in every action that I've ever seen you make. And to us, that surpasses the value of your knowledge and of your training. It's, It's who you are as a person and how many people you've impacted at this organization that have had a better life because of your, your spirit. So I I just want to let you know how much we appreciate that. Um, Yet another hugely successful woman here at our company. Um, We joke sometimes that, you know, I think we have 21 departments, Amy, and 18 of them are run by women. (laughs) And uh, and our president of the company is a woman. And uh, it's just, it's just great to, to be around so many people that care and that have the talent and the skill sets that you you ladies have and how it's driven this company from where it was to where it is. I think back to where we were the day you joined, you know, um, we were doing well, but we weren't doing this kind of, you know, well, and, and right. we've grown together. And um, I just thank you so much. And I thank those who are tuning in. And it's just uh, another example of, how successful women working in unison with each other with the right attitude and the right knowledge base and the right spirit can really drive something special to be created and maintained. And uh, we're just grateful for you. Well, thank you very much. I I love my job. I love the people. Um, I love the culture. I'm so glad to be here. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it's a wonderful place. Well, all right. That's going to wrap it up for today's episode of Women of Success and uh, look forward to bringing as much content to loan officers and mortgage professionals nationwide to help them have a more freedom-filled life, a more fun-filled life, and a more stress-free life. And so uh, thank you again, and we'll talk to you all soon. Take care.